Yeah, so, um, so my name is Jim Hester. I'm a software engineer in our studio, and I'm gonna be talking about the Vroom package, because life is too short to read slow. So the slides for this talk are on speaker deck at Jim Hester slash Vroom, so go there if you, you want to see them afterwards. Yeah, so R is a uh, interactive programming language first. And when, you, when you're designing interactive uh, interfaces, there's three important thresholds you need to keep track of. Um, for operations that take about a tenth of a second, those are, are observed uh, as instantaneous by the user. Um, operations around a second or so are, the, the user observes some, some delay, but they, it doesn't break their train of thought. They're, they can remain, they can keep their, their, their flow when they're, when they're using your program. In operations more than 10 seconds, um, that, that completely breaks their train of thought, they go do something else. And you, you might say that you want your interactive programming environment to give you feedback faster than the user's impulse to switch and go open Twitter or Hacker News. So, to, to, so how does Vroom help with this? To demonstrate this, I'm gonna be doing some benchmarking, and the, the benchmark data set I'm gonna be using is a real world data set of New York City taxi trip fares. Um, and the, the, most of the benchmarks are on only one file of this data set, which has about 15 million observations, 11 variables, has a file size of about 1.5 gigabytes, and has a mix of, of, type, of column types, some characters, some doubles, and some date times. So this is a, a pretty rec representable um, data set for, for real world use. And I'm running all of these benchmarks just on my laptop. So um, using the, uh, reading this, this, this data set in using the read to limb function takes uh, about 80 seconds to run. And Vroom is able to do this in 1.8 seconds. So that really gets you to the, um, the, 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 the lower two thresholds that we're aiming for that we, we don't break our train of thought when you're doing this initial read. So how is Vroom able to do this? How is it able to have such a, a dramatic reduction in, in the time taken to, to read the file? So the first thing is that Vroom uses memory mapped input output, so it's a very efficient uh, input from the disk. Secondly, it, all of the indexing operations are multi-threaded, so you can use all of the, the cores on your machine. Uh, third, it uses uh, an efficient C uh, function string uh, complement span, which, which is often implemented, uh, implemented with hand-optimized assembly. And finally, and most importantly, it uses the alt-rep frame framework available in R3.5+. So what is this alt-rep framework, and why is it important to the performance of Vroom? So it stands for alternative representation. As I mentioned, it's available in R3.5+. And what this does is it allows you to, rather than having all of your vectors be backed by blobs of memory, you can have a completely customizable memory storage. So it doesn't have to be a blob of memory. It could just be, a, it could actually just be a function that generates the data um, on demand. Or in our case, and, uh, and all of these functions are actually transparent to existing R and C and C++ code. So your code doesn't need to change at all to take advantage of this. And what this means for us is that we can, we can use this to do on-demand parsing of the values. So when I'm doing that initial read of, of the file, all I'm doing is indexing where all of the delimiters are in the file. And then I don't actually read the values until you, you actually use them in your, in your scripts. So what is the effect of performance on this? So I can run Vroom without uh, using altrep, and that's the top bar. Um, and then using, actually using altrep and doing this delayed parsing uh, gets us the speed that we saw previously. So why, what is the main driver of, of this difference? So you may not know that, uh, but R has a what's called a global string pool. So what this means is that if you have a character vector, the thing that is actually stored in the vector is a pointer into this global string pool. So if you have two values that have the exact same string representation, so there's two values of A in this example, um, both of those are pointing to the same location in memory. And this is also true if you have the same value in different vectors. So here Y also has the value of A, and that is also pointing to the same value in this global string pool. And the real big advantage of this is that takes much less memory because each time a string value appears anywhere in your R program, it's only being stored in one location. 
The big disadvantage for generating string or for reading into in strings is that this requires a hash lookup every time you're creating a new string object, uh, and which which has uh, some overhead. And this is also needs to be done single threaded, so you you can't um, create strings in two separate threads at the same time. So that's how Vroom is fast, but there has to be some sort of cost because we're we're doing this delayed uh, parsing. Eventually, we need to actually pay for this delayed parsing and use it. So our benchmarks previously were kind of unfair. To really have a more representative benchmark, we need to do some manipulations on our data after reading them in initially. And that's what we're showing here. So I, this is still doing the reading, but it's also I'm also printing the, the data set uh, using head, tail to look at the beginning and the end of the data set, sampling some rows within the data set, um, filtering based on a single column, and then doing a group by and summation aggregation. So doing all of these steps, um, you can see that the, when we're using altrep at the, at the bottom, um, so, some of these additional steps take a little bit more time than they would uh, normally, but it's not like a, a huge amount. It's not like exponentially more time. And, um, and each of the individual steps is still within that threshold that we were talking about, that like half a, that less than one second a tenth of a second threshold. So when you're doing these interactions interactively, when you're doing um, interactive exploration of your data, it feels like um, you have a very responsive system throughout your entire interactive an analysis. And also, um, the the total time still um, ends up being less than any of the the other approaches that that do all of the reading up front. And so the last thing is that the, the maximum possible time that this could take is basically equivalent to what you, you get from Vroom without doing this, this lazy parsing. So it's, so you can, once all of the values have been read into your, 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 um, your, your, your script, you no longer have additional cost. At that point, it's exactly the same as if you had, had just read them in eagerly. So that was, that was all from the same um, benchmark data set, but let's, we can simulate some data to, to see how the performance changes with, with all other types of, of data. So here we're looking at all double values. And this is really like a worst case scenario for Vroom um, because doubles can, are parsed very quickly so, and you don't have this problem with the global string pool. So um, let's see how the performance changes there. So in this case, read to limb is, is very slow for reading in a file of, of just uh, numeric values. This is about a half gigabyte file, and it takes over two minutes for read to to read it. So I'm actually going to remove it and, and look at the, only the remaining packages. So all of the rest of the packages read this file very quickly. Data table is, is really well optimized for this use case, and it can read this, this entire file in, in only a half a second. And Vroom is roughly um, similar, to, similar to the data table performance. With alt rep, it's, it, the, the initial parsing is a little bit faster, but then once you do some manipulations on the data, the overall time um, is, is a bit slower. <laughs> slower, But uh, it's important to look at the x-axis in, in this case. All of these packages are reading this, this data in under five seconds. So it's, it's really quick, regardless of what package you use. If we look at all character um, values, the, the, the characteristics change quite a bit. So this is uh, the same size data set, a million rows by 25 columns. And actually, it has a little bit less overall data than the double data. The double data is closer to half a gigabyte. This is about a third of a gigabyte. But if you look at the x-axis here, all of the other packages are here much slower than, than, than reading in the equivalent sized uh, double benchmark. So it's taking around 50 seconds to read in, in this, this data. But if we look at Vroom with alt rep, we can read this data in only a third of a second because we're using this delayed uh, parsing. And even after doing all of the manip manip manipulations, we're still like so far, so much faster than everything else. Um, it's, it's a really big win. So this was all, right up to now. I've been talking about performance um, uh, characteristics of Room. What are some? But it also has some other features that I think are, are really useful. So the first of which is uh, a nice interface for column selection. So often people will read in a, a, a data set and then use dplyr select to select a specific columns that they actually want to analyze later. So in this case, I'm reading in this taxi's data set, and uh, 
and I'm selecting the medallion column, a pickup date time column, and any other column that ends with amount. And we can use basically the exact same syntax in Vroom. This is called like tidy select syntax by using the call select argument. So we don't actually need the data table, or sorry, the dplyr package um, at all to, to do this type of selection. And the other nice thing is this is a little bit more performant because we're, we're not reading in that, that, those columns and then throwing them away. We're just avoiding reading them in the first place. So we can also do other selections like removing a, a specific column or renaming a column. The other thing that Vroom provides is a really nice interface for combining multiple data sets into one single data set. So this taxi data set is actually 12 total files and we can, combine, we can combine all of those files into one data set by simply passing the file pass directly to the Vroom function. And then it will index all of the files and combine them together into one data set. And we can also include the path, the file path in our data set we're using this ID parameter. And that's useful because often the file path actually contains data, like the, the date that each of the, um, fi the files was run on, was collected on. So what's the performance in this case? So this um, data set was, so I read in all of the, the full taxi trip fare data set, which is 12 1.5 gigabyte files, around 18 gigabytes in total. And Room is able to read it in about 12.5 seconds. So it ends up being like 173 million rows. And in addition, after doing all of these um, various data manipulations, that ends up being around 25 seconds or so for the total manipulation. So even with fairly large data, you're still able to have this interactive um, explore, exploratory uh, relationship with, with the, the bigger data. So Vroom also has a, a reader for fixed width files. So, and it's, it uses the exact same uh, features that we talked about previously, so you can still use this lazy uh, parsing. And this, this data set, this is another real world data set of uh, about half a million rows, 156 columns, and a 1.5 gigabyte file, and Vroom is able to do it in uh, less than a second. Whereas if you look at the, the read fixed with file, this takes almost 20 minutes in that case. Vroom also has a, a function for counting lines, so it basically does the same delayed um, parsing in this case, but this is really useful if you want to just get a line count for a given file. You can just call length on, on, on the object and get the length, but you can also do things like look at the head or the tail, the beginning or the end of the file, or sample lines from within the file really easily without having to read in the entire file. So Vroom also has an efficient uh, writer that, that works on um, native R connections directly. And it will actually, if in, in the gzip case, it will actually create a, a, a gzip connection under the hood. So you can just give it a output file with a gz extension, it will create the gzip connection under the hood and write to it. And the performance is on par with, with data table. Um, and so you can see the Vroom is basically either write a little bit slower or a little bit faster depending on the benchmark. But it also, as I mentioned, it also has this native, it uses native R connections, so you can pipe to other things like a Z standard um, compressor as well. And I should mention, uh, I think Arun mentioned this briefly, that the gzip support isn't in the CRAN version of data table yet, but is coming in the devel version. So Vroom is uh, on CRAN. You can install it with install.packages Vroom. There's a website, vroom.rlib.org. I made a YouTube video a screencast going into a little bit more of the, the details of the package. So you can see it at that location. And then it's, Vroom is a new package. There's probably bugs, so I'd love for people to try it out. If you find some issue, please report it. If you have a feature request, report that. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Hey Jim, nice talk, very impressive results. Uh, I was just wondering for the benchmarks, did you ever try like running the operations twice or three times or 10 times after and not just once after reading the file? Because I wonder if it's cached or if it's slower or the same speed or faster the second or third time. Yeah, yeah, so the, the reading might 
So the reading may be a little bit faster because the OS will, will cache the, um, once, once you've ran, ran a file, once the OS will put the file in, in, like a, in, in a memory cache, it'll, it'll, and then th that'll be read faster. Um, in terms of the manipulations, once a, a given column has been, has been materialized, um, all other accesses to that column are just the same as if you were, it was already in is that the data is already in memory at that point, so it doesn't have to go back to the file. So usually once you've done that initial ma manipulation, all of the subsequent manipulations will be faster. They'll basically be the same as if you read it eagerly from the beginning. Uh, thanks for the talk. Sounds amazing. I don't know anything about Altrep, but uh, do I need specific functions to use this alternative representation or does the whole deployer functions and all use them natively or? Yeah, so all work? of your existing scripts and even C, C level uh, calls will, will just use um, all, all the alt reps, alt rep stuff is under the hood. So none of your existing scripts need to change. Um, if you want to use alt rep in your own packages, there's you have to implement um, some of the methods. But um, if you're just using the the alt rep representations from other from like the Vroom package, you don't have to change anything in your scripts. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, I was wondering the the functions that you used for the benchmarking. Do you know if they uh, materialize the alt rep uh, objects, or do they use the alt rep API to access them? So. Yeah, so in, in the actual benchmark. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just, uh, I, sh I should have mentioned the, the benchmark, there's a benchmarking vignette that has all of the code that I used in, in the benchmarks here. So if you're really interested in details on how they were, how they were working, I would go there. But, um, but all of the benchmarks are just calling like dplyr or base or data table um, uh, R, R functions directly. They're not doing anything like special with, with AltRep. Hi, Jim. I'm here over there. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit more about the production readiness? For example, important functions like finding errors in CSV files. Which line caused an error? Yeah, Thank sure. You. So, yeah, so that's something that um, there's not a lot of support in Vroom right now for, but it's something that I'm planning on implementing later. So that's something that Readar does, I think, pretty well. Is is once you is giving you a good like a whole data frame of problems if if there's uh, data issues in, in your import. Um, so right now, Vroom won't really, it, well, if there's a problem parsing a, a particular field, it will put an NA in that location, but it doesn't give you a, a comprehensive report of where all those problems are. And it's a little tricky to, to decide how to do that when you're doing this delayed parsing. Um, but it's definitely something I'm aware, <coughs> it's definitely a limitation I'm aware of and something that I'm going to be working on the next few months. Let's thank Jim again. All right, thank everybody.